Hello everyone, my name is Dr. Ferox and today I'm going to talk to you about canine parvovirus. Parvo is a relatively recent virus on the scene. It was first identified in the late 1970s and then it took only about two years for the virus to spread worldwide and kill thousands upon thousands of dogs. And parvovirus is pretty scary when you see it. It causes a huge amount of pain, a huge amount of suffering and absolutely huge volumes of bloody, watery diarrhea. Because parvovirus is so notorious, there have been lots and lots of so-called miracle cures arrive on the internet that claim to cure your dog of parvovirus at home. And these are complete bunkers. But to understand why, you need to understand what canine parvovirus is and what it does. These happy little structures are intestinal villi they line your intestine and they increase your surface area so that you can absorb all the nutrients from your food. So instead of having just one flat wall, you have all these projections which double or triple the surface area of the gut. And even on the surface of these cells, you will have little brush borders and more ways to increase the surface area of the gut. Without them, you simply can't absorb your food, your water or anything else that reaches your intestine. The way intestinal villi grow is that these cells down here in the intestinal crypts multiply and then they spread up the villi until they reach the top. At the top they're basically going to die because they're surrounded in digestive enzymes. They just don't last very long. So these cells at the bottom are multiplying all the time to keep your villi nice and tall. And when they're tall when they've got these long finger projections into your food, they can absorb everything and you live a happy life. When you have a parvovirus infection, the parvovirus will cause enteritis by targeting these rapidly dividing cells down in the crypts. But after a day or two, you're no longer replenishing all these other cells that go up the villus. So without them, you're quickly going to have no villus at all. This is called villus atrophy. And after a little while, it's just going to look rather pathetic, really. A few sad little cells at the bottom of your intestine, if at all. Even those cells might slough off, and then you leave the blood vessels exposed below, and that's how you get that horrific fairly distinctive bloody diarrhea of parvovirus. But parvo doesn't stop there. It attacks rapidly dividing cells. In very, very young puppies, so puppies under six weeks of age, you have lots of rapidly dividing cells in the heart and that will cause permanent heart damage. But you also have lots of rapidly dividing cells in your immune system, which is mostly in your bone marrow. Now, if you have a virus that is dependent upon an immune response to clear it, that attacks your immune system, I'm sure you can see how a patient would end up in a whole lot of trouble fairly quickly. Our best protection for parvovirus is vaccination. And really, it's the only one we've got. Because vaccines will let the patient develop their own antibodies. Those antibodies can neutralize the virus before it causes all of these problems. Parvovirus makes a real mess of your patients. Aside from the very bloody profuse diarrhea and the dehydration that results, it also causes a huge amount of pain and nausea because the intestinal lining is falling away. They typically vomit, they often go septic, they're often hypoglycemic, and basically without intense supportive treatment, they're likely to die. 
Nevertheless, lots of people like to claim they've treated parvovirus at home. This is frankly unbelievable. To treat parvovirus, you need to do so many things all at the same time. You have to correct the dehydration because without that, they die. You have to protect them from secondary sepsis because once the blood vessels are exposed to the intestinal lining, all the bacteria inside that intestine can cross into the bloodstream very, very easily. And they often do. You have to support them nutritionally, not just keeping up their glucose, but you need food to get to the intestinal crypts. Because if you don't feed these little enterocytes, they don't multiply. You can't keep them going on intravenous nutrition alone. You have to control their pain, otherwise you're just an asshole. And you need to prevent their nausea and stop them vomiting so that you can keep food and fluid in these pups anyway. The diarrhea is almost the least problematic symptom because if you can control everything else, the diarrhea will eventually get better, but it significantly contributes to dehydration. Just stopping the diarrhea on its own is not going to fix the rest of the parvo problem. So you might be wondering, if parvo is so terrible, and it is, it absolutely is terrible, why do so many people claim that they have treated parvo at home? I suspect in these cases, the dogs have not actually had parvovirus. Parvovirus in a hospital setting is highly treatable with intensive treatment. You can get 80 to 96% survival rates with conventional therapies, which is why it's kind of funny when somebody says their home cure has a 90% success rate because so do mine. But a lot of people who try to treat parvo at home probably don't bother going to the vet for a diagnosis. And if the dog just has ordinary run-of-the-mill diarrhea or it ate garbage or it has something else, the prognosis is a lot better. In particular, coronavirus is another virus that attacks the cells that form these intestinal villi, but it attacks them up high towards the tip. Consequently, when coronavirus infection is at play, you have some atrophy of the intestinal villi, but they're a lot smaller. But it's not as much as you do in parvovirus. You still get diarrhea, but you're not going to get as extreme symptoms. And these dogs will often recover with very minimal treatment. So how do the clever con artists of the internet and natural magazines claim to treat parvovirus? Let's start with the most stupid way. The most stupid way the internet claims you can treat parvovirus is by forcing a sick puppy to drink bleach. We're talking about a dog that already has its gut lining falling away and the internet will tell you to make it drink bleach. It should be fairly obvious why this is a bad idea. Another method suggested is to feed assorted anti-diarrheal all-natural herbs, which might help the diarrhea if you're very lucky, but what's it going to do for the vomiting, the dehydration, the pain, the sepsis and the nausea that these pups are going through. Not a whole lot. Charcoal is another common one. Not entirely sure why somebody thought charcoal was a good idea, presumably because it's known to absorb toxins. But the toxins in parvovirus, they're not free floating, just there for the charcoal to mop up. They're inside the cells or they're inside the bloodstream. Feeding charcoal to the puppy isn't going to get anywhere near them. Chamomile tea is often recommended by the internet. I don't know why or what it's supposed to do. It's not going to touch the nausea that a puppy has because its intestinal lining is falling away, nor is it going to fix all the diarrhea and vomiting. Ginger is often said to stop them vomiting. 
it's not going to be enough. We need pretty heavy duty drugs to make these pups comfortable. A little bit of ginger is not going to do the job. Some people say colloidal silver, but there is no evidence at all that colloidal silver does anything for these pups. And another common but stupid choice is to feed them willow bark. Willow bark is all natural, but it's basically where we get aspirin from. And aspirin is a non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drug. And the number one side effect of this class of medication is that it can cause intestinal ulcers. In a parvovirus case, the whole intestine is basically already an ulcer. It's contraindicated completely. In fact, it's only likely to make this problem worse. But there is one thing that I would consider not a miracle cure, but certainly a big help for parvovirus cases. And that's plasma transfusions from a vaccinated donor. Plasma is great stuff. It contains lots and lots of things these pups need, like protein directly, and glucose, and clotting factors. It helps fight off sepsis, but it also contains lots of those antibodies that are going to help neutralize the virus directly and speed them on their way to recovery. Now you can't just give them a plasma transfusion and send them home the next day. They still often spend two or three days in hospital, but it does speed up their recovery and it does improve their survival rates. The only downside is that plasma is kind of expensive, but it is basically liquid gold. Now, if you've gone through all of this and you actually understand what parvovirus is, and you still want to try the home remedies on the internet, I can't help you. But I do urge everybody in any situation, always vaccinate your puppies. Vaccination is the best protection we have for our pups. And it's the only way to prevent the huge amount of suffering that parvovirus causes. Always vaccinate your puppies. Thank you for listening. My name is Dr. Ferox and I will catch you next time.